the blame Bernie Sanders train has left the station. Uh, freaked out Democrats, Democrat operatives, Democrat politicians, uh, Democrat journalists are now blaming Bernie Sanders for the fact that Hillary Clinton uh, is doing abysmally with uh, millennials and young adults. Uh, I have two articles here I'm going to read from, but um, it, it, it's, it's, again, corporate Democrats, the Democratic establishment, who in the moment when it was clear Bernie Sanders was not going to uh, be the nominee, and they said, you know what? Let's just pick a corporate Democrat as her vice president, or Hillary Clinton surmised this. Uh, let's just do business as usual. Let's try to court Republicans. Uh, let's try to get Jeb Bush's donors. Let's just do business as usual. Those kids, they're angry now. They'll come back. Well, it's September 22nd, less than two months till the election. Hillary Clinton is polling at 31% in honesty <laughs> among 18 to 34, and they are friggin' the fuck out. Um, so now they're blaming everybody but Hillary Clinton and themselves for uh, Hillary Clinton's struggles. So I'll read you uh, the first one. It's the headline's hilarious, actually. It's from uh, Mother Jones, which used to be a fairly progressive outlet. Uh, I don't know what they're doing now. So the headline is, Don't Hate Millennials. Save it for Bernie Sanders. And this is from Kevin Drum. And uh, it's from a few days ago, so I'm a little late to it. But Kevin Drum writes for them. And by the way, for context, the uh, editor-in-chief of Mother Jones uh, tweeted out, I hate millennials. Uh, oh, yeah, I have never hated millennials more. Uh, she tweeted that out on, in September 15th about Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton's struggling poll numbers among millennials. So that's the editor-in-chief of Mother Jones. So Mother Jones, editor-in-chief, is in trouble over this tweet, Kevin Drum writes. Now, you think that because Clara is my boss, I'm going to defend her over this. But I'm not. Not totally, anyway. Let's break down what's actually going on here. First, Atrios is upset because he doesn't like criticism of young people. I don't know who Atrios is. Why? Beats me. As, as near as I can tell, millennials don't actually attract any more abuse than any other age cohort. I'm not sure why they should be of any, any more immune to criticize, criticism than anyone else. Second, and more important, this poll result seems like a bit of an outlier. On average, other polls seem to show Johnson and Stein getting about a quarter of the millennial vote, not 36%. I don't know what polls he's talking about. What's more, a lot of that is coming from Trump voters. Defecting millennials seem to be split nearly evenly between lefty Clinton defectors and center-right Trump defectors. No, that's not true. Defected millennials are pretty united in the fact that they are not voting for Hillary Clinton. Some of them are voting for Jill Stein. Actually, many of them are voting for Jill Stein. And many of them are voting for Gary Johnson. I don't know uh, a lot of them who are voting for Donald Trump. That said, Clinton is clearly doing worse among millennials than Obama did four years ago. But it's a very restricted group of millennials. Over at 538, Harry Enton lays out some survey data, which suggests that virtually all of the defection is in the 18 to 24 age group. Older millennials, older millennials, are supporting Clinton at about the rate you'd expect. Uh, I don't know how that is if the poll, the last poll I saw, it said 18 to 34, which is the entire gamut of millennials, is uh, at 31% uh, honesty for Hillary Clinton. That's all millennials, 31%. So, what's the deal with this very young age group? Here's where I part from Clara. I reserve most of my frustration for Bernie Sanders. So he doesn't hate the millennials. He hates, the, he hates Bernie. He's the one who convinced these folks that Clinton was in the pocket of Wall Street. <laughs> she gave a speech to Goldman Sachs, exclamation point. He's the one who convinced them that she was a tool of wealthy elites. She's raising money from rich people. And he's italicizing these things to give off irony or, you know, that this is funny. Uh, he's the one who convinced them she was a corporate chill. She supported the TPP. He's the one who, when he finally endorsed her, did it so grudgingly that he sounded like a guy being held hostage. He's the one who did next to nothing to get his supporters to stop booing her from the convention floor. That's not true. He's the one who promised he'd campaign his heart out to defeat Donald Trump, but has done hardly anything since, despite finding plenty of time to campaign against Debbie Wasserman Schultz and set up an anti-TPP movement. All right, let's go through this one by one because every single sentence there is a lie. So, I, your humble servant, 
uh, will clear things up. So he's the one who convinced these folks that Clinton was in the pocket of Wall Street. Uh, I think that Barack Obama uh, had something to do with that in 2008. I'm pretty sure every single progressive other than Bernie Sanders has been saying this about Hillary Clinton long before Bernie Sanders came around. I'm pretty sure that Hillary Clinton, if you go to OpenSecrets.org, which many young people have gone to, or you go to anything online and you could find her top list of donors, it wasn't hard to figure out that she's in the pocket of Wall Street. I'm pretty sure that Hillary Clinton giving uh, speeches for $225,000 to Goldman Sachs and other banks f- several years after th- those same banks tanked the economy for working class families, Hillary Clinton Loves to talk about working class families. Pretty sure millennials uh, knew about that before Bernie Sanders. Did Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, bring it home? Yes. But this writer makes it seem like millennials are just stupid ass rugrats and brainwashed. And whatever Bernie fed, it just went into their brains and seeped through their nervous system. And that is the science behind Feel the Burn. And millennials had no brain. They did no research. They're just Trump voters, a a little younger and prettier. He says... Um, he's the one who convinced them she was a tool of the wealthy elites. No, I think Hillary Clinton did that all on her own. I mean, I'm not a sci- I'm not a doctor, but she got pretty run down in August, correct? Well, what was she doing in August? Not a lot of not a lot of actual speeches. She was going around the country, uh, hobnobbing behind closed doors with fat cat rich people from Silicon Valley to the Hamptons and all over the place. So I think she did a pretty good job of convincing young people, not just young people, older people too, but for the purposes here, young people, that she is a shill for wealthy elites. I don't think Bernie Sanders had to do that. By the way, I, I complained to many progressives during the campaign that Bernie didn't go far enough. Uh, frankly, I, I wish he did some of these things, but he didn't. When he had an opportunity in a debate, to, well, can you give me an example of her uh, putting policy through because of donors? He waffled. He he dodged it. He just went back to his general speech. So this is nonsense. All right. She's raising money from rich people. He's the one who convinced them she was a corporate shill. Again, I think Hillary Clinton convinced them that she was a corporate shill. I think Hillary Clinton during the primaries when uh, just for the common sense detector, when during speeches, I mean, during the debate, she would not release her transcripts to banks uh, coming up with some ridiculous uh, notion that, you know, as soon as the ma- my male counterparts have to release their speeches, I'll do the same. Kind of deflecting on her being a corporate chill to an argument of sexism. I think that might have uh, had red flags to young people. What is this person hiding? Um, okay. She supported the TPP. He's the one who, when he finally endorsed her, did it so grudgingly that he sounded like a guy being held hostage. I don't believe Kevin Drum was at that rally uh, or speech where he endorsed her because I was. And... He looked like a fairly, uh, you know, was, was he out there with pom-poms and a cheerleading outfit? No, but he did certainly endorse her. He said Hillary Clinton has won the Democratic nomination. He spoke for 45 minutes. He, he rah rod for her at the Democratic convention. He gave a pretty nice speech about her. Uh, so I don't know what more you would want him to do other than show up on stage naked with an H and an arrow, which I think most people don't want. Uh, no offense, Bernie. So... That's not true either. Now, uh, he's, the, he's the one who did next to nothing to get his supporters to stop booing her from the convention floor. Again, I don't know if Kevin Drum was at the DNC, but I was. And Bernie Sanders uh, sent out an email to all his supporters, and there were text messages sent out uh, to please, you know, uh, not make... I don't know how... I, I'm paraphrasing how he said it, but I understand where you're coming from, but please, we need to be unified. Do not, uh, you know, make a transparent... Um, revolt on the floor. That was from Bernie Sanders. Kevin might not know because the Democratic, the media didn't cover anything about Bernie Sanders uh, or protesters at the DNC. They put out this image that it was unified when it wasn't. Uh, He's the one who promised he'd campaign his heart out to defeat Donald Trump, but has done hardly nothing, anything since, despite finding plenty of time to campaign against Debbie Wasserman Schultz and set up an anti-TPP movement. So this one's absolutely absurd. Number one, he was just in Ohio for her Saturday. He's been, he went around for her two other times, I believe. He's been on, on, he's been on national television for her. Uh, he just ran for president for a year, and he's also writing a book. What do you want him to do? You want him to go on the road full-time for Hillary Clinton? That's ridiculous. He's been out there. 
Uh, and despite finding plenty of time to campaign against Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, you know me, I, I took Bernie to the carpet. He did not go out and campaign against Debbie Wasserman Schultz hard enough. He did not go to Florida to campaign for Tim Canova. He went on national TV and sent out a few emails uh, for Tim Canova. But Bernie Sanders was not spending much time going against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So I don't know what this guy's talking about. And, uh, and set up an anti-TPP. He's been too busy setting up an anti-TPP movement. Oh, man, Kevin, you know, he's busy trying to help, actually help people not lose their jobs and not help China. That damn socialist. Doesn't he understand he needs to fall in line and start taking the checks and start helping Hillary Clinton compile hers? I mean, it's ridiculous. I'm, I go forward. There's a reason that very young millennials are strongly anti-Clinton, even though the same age group supported Obama energetically during his elections. And it's not because their policy views are very different. That's where you're wrong. A small part of it is probably just that Clinton is 68 years old, though Sanders was older. Right, so the millennials backed a 74-year-old overwhelmingly, but they're not backing Hillary because she's 68. That's, that makes sense. Part of it is probably that she isn't a, the sp- inspirational speaker Obama was. Yes, because Bernie Sanders, who is about as cool as my left toe, uh, no offense, Bernie, uh, you know, all, they only care about inspiration, not, not policy. But most of it can be laid at the feet of Bernie Sanders. He convinced young voters that Hillary Clinton was a shifty, corrupt, lying shill who cared nothing for real progressive values, despite a literal left to- lifetime of fighting for them. Sadly, that stuck. Hmm. So let's talk about the progressive values. Uh, Quinn, Jordan, you bowl of sex. Tell me the news. I'm doing it. Let's talk about those progressive values she's fighting for. The Iraq War. She voted for the Repatriation Act of 2004, which let corporations who have been hiding their taxes overseas bring back their money at a 5% tax rate, a.k.a. a blowjob to corporate America. She also voted to extend the Bush tax cuts when she was in the Senate. She also uh, pushed NAFTA when her husband was president. She also pushed the crime bill, which put African-Americans widely in jail when her husband was president. She also pushed welfare reform when her husband was president, which cut uh, cut welfare uh, for mo- mostly low-income and working families. Uh, let, let's go on to her time uh, as Secretary of State. She pushed uh, the Libya war. She uh, pushed a coup in Honduras, which did not work out very well. Uh, as, as a candidate, she pushed $12 minimum wage, which isn't anywhere close to inflation levels of what the minimum wage needs to be, And then she flip-flopped to try to make it seem like she's for a $15 minimum wage. She's not for free public college tuition, even though she's made some type of deal with Bernie Sanders to get him to endorse her, uh, to make uh, public college tuition free for families making under under $125,000 a year. So I'm not hearing many progressive things. I'll give her as first lady. She helped uh, children get health care. I think that's a great thing. I think at one time in her career, Hillary Clinton might have been more progressive. But once she started collecting the checks from Wall Street, that went out the door. So that's that's one piece. Uh, I could go on and kill him, but I want to read another piece. Uh, It is in New York Magazine, and it's Can Bernie Undo the Damage He's Done to Clinton by Ed Kilgore. Now, Ed Kilgore, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Ed Kilgore. Give me one second. Uh, Lee Fang at the Intercept had a great tweet about Ed Kilgore. He is a Democratic operative, a Democratic shill, whatever you want to call it. He, uh, such as, Kilgore predicted the GOP was weak going into the 2010 midterms. In fact, they won the biggest landslide in history. Uh, Habitually wrong Dem pundit Ed Kilgore blames Bernie, who, by the way, refused to run negative ads against Hillary Clinton for her poor performance. That's what Lee Fang said. All right, let's lead... Let's give uh, Ed his 15 minutes of fame here. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be happy with it. So Ed says, at a time when Hillary Clinton's campaign seems to be pivoting from constant appeals to disgruntled Republicans to a recognition of its big problem among left-leaning millennials, former rival Bernie Sanders is now out on the trail trying to convince his former supporters to get with, to get with the program. Get with the program, guys. Now, before I go on, who said when she picked Tim Kaine that was a mistake? I think it was me. I think it was the Young Turks. I think it was progressive people who knew there wasn't enough never-Trump Republicans in the world 
to put Hillary Clinton over the top. And what she needed to do was unite the left with the center and actually do something for progressive people and be the progressive who gets things done. She ignored it, and now they're crying foul and blaming us. His initial stops in Ohio did not exactly bring back memories of excited young folks rocking and rolling to the burn. He drew 200 in Akron and 600 at Kent State. Damn you, Bernie, you can't get more than a few hundred people out for this Republican shill? What's wrong with you, Bernie Sanders? But, in important respects, Sanders is seeking to undo the damage he did to Clinton's candidacy especially among millennials during the long and occasionally bitter nomination contest. And in his pitch against the temptation of voting for a minor party candidate, Bernie is also at odds with the example he has set in his own political career and with his case for a political revolution that eschews conventional politics. To an embarrassing extent, Sanders is making the same argument pro-Clinton progressives made against him in the primaries, The distance between his policy agenda and hers are a matter of degree, not kind. First of all, that's not true. When Hillary Clinton and her people said it's what what they said during the, you know, it's just degrees. We're still um, we're still uh, on the same wavelength about things. It's just how we how would we get to the goals? No, 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 no. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders were on a different stratosphere in terms of policy. So this nonsense about uh, it's just to different degrees is nonsense. And you know what, Bernie, he might say things along those lines uh, while he endorses her and goes out with her. I don't exactly think he's going to go on stage uh, you know, at a rally for her and say, the woman sucks, but Donald Trump is Hitler. I, I don't expect Bernie Sanders to say that. So uh, as Sanders praised Clinton in Ohio, he highlighted their agreed upon policies regarding free public university and college tuition for low-income families and their shared dedication to picking a Supreme Court nominee who would be against the Citizens United decision. The bulk of Sanders' surrogate speeches more often focused on his own policy priorities and positions, with Clinton's name tagged on the end, assuring his crowd that she understands the importance of progressive issues. Let Let me take a guess why Bernie Sanders talks about his policy proposals more than Hillary Clinton's policy proposals at a speech for Hillary Clinton. Maybe because they became her policy positions five minutes ago in order to get his endorsement, and they will, just as soon as they became her policy positions, they will become, uh, you know, things of the past or not realistic once she becomes president. These writers and these pundits make it seem like because Hillary Clinton writes down that she she supports something or makes a deal with Bernie Sanders to support something or to go closer to his side, that is like it, it's a law now and it's become law and we could trust her. She, I said this before and I'll say it again, her level of flip-floppery makes Mitt Romney look consistent. She is a flip-flopper. She will say, she has a history of saying one thing and doing another. She has a history of chasing the wind and the poles to get what she needs. She needs millennials now. So what is she doing? She's going... God, she's going on with Zach Galifianakis uh, and on two ferns, which Obama did quite humorously in 2012. Hillary Clinton did yesterday. It looked a little awkward. She's trying her best to, you know, get Bernie out and Elizabeth Warren out and all these people. Once the poll numbers go up for millennials, you, you think you think she's going to be, you know, singing Katy Perry at karaoke night at a bar with college students? I don't think so. And in fairness to Hillary Clinton, she's not unique. This is all politicians, you know. All the politicians go into South Carolina and other places with black, black votes to get their votes. Then when the primary is over, uh, you know, on- onward to the next voting block. So this is what's wrong with American politics. But this guy and pundits like him are blaming Bernie Sanders because, uh, you know, he's tepidly talking about her policies and not showcasing them enough because she isn't consistent with these policies. And Bernie Sanders is not going to put his name out there to say things that are deliberately false. It ain't going to happen. So, but the logic of his own movement requires him to treat the election of Hillary Clinton as a relatively minor way station on the road to revolution. Quote, this is the time to elect Hillary Clinton and then work after the election to mobilize millions of people to make sure she can be the most progressive president she can be. That's not the most inspiring endorsement I've ever heard, nor is this uttered in an interview with Seth Meyers. Quote from Bernie, we got to get beyond personality. What I would ask those people who voted for me, even if you have concerns with Clinton, you don't like you don't like this aspect. I understand that. But look at the hard issues that impact your lives and your neighbors lives. 
and then think whether or not you want Donald Trump to become president. I think if you frame it in that way, our people will end up voting for Clinton. What do you want Bernie Sanders to do? You want Bernie Sanders to put a gun to her head? No, nope. obviously I don't want that, but figuratively, and make her uh, before the, re- the reinst- reinstallation of Glass-Steagall? You want Bernie Sanders to make her call for the big, brank- big banks to be broken up? You want Bernie Sanders to make her call for a 3 to 4% surcharge tax on rich people? You want Bernie Sanders to make her call for, in- for increased taxes on corporations? I mean, the list can go on and on. The problem is not Bernie Sanders. The problem is Hillary Clinton. Her whole political career is halfway measures and platitudes. Bernie Sanders cannot make Hillary Clinton uh, announce policies. He cannot make her uh, be anything other than the centrist to moderate to Republican she is. So Bernie Sanders cannot go on stage and corral thousands of young people to vote for someone because young people are not as stupid as these people think they are. They're not puppets. You can't pull their strings. They're intelligent. Unfortunately, they're buried in student loan debt, so their intelligence is often squandered after they graduate because they have to take dead-end jobs just to pay their loans instead of pursue the things they want. Bernie Sanders, I've had my issues with him. Uh, I I was very uh, critical of him uh, about what he what he did with Tim Canova. I was critical about him uh, during during the primary that he wasn't being tough enough on, on her. But the bottom line is, it's not Bernie Sanders' responsibility to to uh, round up millions of young people to vote for Hillary Clinton. It's her responsibility. And frankly, Hillary Clinton, it's it, it's too late for an extreme makeover. And you know what? If she loses, she's going to probably lose because she didn't have enough millennials. She didn't have the level of African American support. That President Obama had. She didn't have the level of Latino support that President Obama did. And frankly, because karma is a bitch and years and years and years of talking two, th- talking out of two sides, three sides of your mouth and being for this when it's convenient and being for that when it's convenient and being for this in front of these people and that in front of these people caught up to you in a year that people revolted against that type of politics. That is the problem. So Mother Jones could blame Bernie Sanders. New York Magazine could blame Bernie Sanders. They could tell millennials to, quote, get with the program. But you know what? I think you guys need to get with the program. And you know what the program is? Helping average working class people, millennials and older people. The problem is you can't read the mood of the country like Bernie Sanders was able to uh, read. You don't understand that this isn't some temporary thing where kiddies and older people are kicking and screaming. This is an outsider movement that is not going to go away. Even if Hillary Clinton wins, Hillary Clinton might have more revolt and protest against her than George W. Bush had. Because this kind of sentiment does not just go away, particularly when you have leaders. That's why Occupy Wall Street fizzled, because it didn't have leadership. So, excuse me if I'm not going to sit by idly and let the bullshit blame game begin for Hillary Clinton. Hey, the problem is, Hillary Clinton, you don't have the charisma to, in, to inspire young people, and you don't have the policies. It's nothing personal. Not every politician uh, knocks down the doors and inspires people. Sometimes you just vote for someone, they're a little technical, but you like their policy positions, and, it's, and it seems uh, they seem competent and credible. The problem is young people don't like your policy proposals. If, I, if, I, if, 150, if, if you're $150,000 in debt, could you say off the top of your head that Hillary Clinton is going to put a real dent in that? No, you can't. If you're working two to three jobs, can you say off the top of your head, millennial or older, do you think Hillary Clinton's going to put a dent in that? No, you don't. You had an instinctual belief that Bernie would, or at least he would fight hard to do it. You don't have that with Hillary Clinton, and that is the problem. So that is, you know, for these people uh, jumping on the blame Bernie train, I am going to keep stepping in front of the Bernie train. Now, I don't want, I am no Bernie, bro, and I'll criticize him when it's necessary. I criticized his speech that endorsed her. I went line by line, what was not factual. I criticized him when he, uh, you know, left Tim Canova hanging at the altar. But I will not let people blame Bernie Sanders or millennials for a terrible candidate and a terrible Democratic Party that has done nothing to actually woo and win over millennials. Policy, policy, uh, winning people over is not based on what you tell me you're going to do. It's about what have you done. I'm I'm an action speak louder than words kind of guy. So I don't care what's in the Democratic platform. I don't care what Hillary Clinton says she will do now. I care what has she done for the last 30 years and what does that say about what she will do. There is no, 
you wait till Hillary Clinton becomes president and they're going to start making tweaks to Social Security or they're going to start sending more special advisors to Iraq and Iran and Syria. You, you wait till she starts having wine and cheese with Republican lawmakers to bring back the old days of compromise. And before you know it, we're going to have plenty of bipartisan compromise that gives corporations tax cuts and middle class people the crumbs. That is the future under Hillary Clinton, in my view.